Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Border Skate 3. In this episode, I'm gonna share a fun way to play an observation wizard. We are gonna use it to deal a lot of reliable cold damage, and we are gonna do this by retaliating. If you have watched my abjuration wizard guide video, I think you already know how good it is as a tank and a protector, and you would also know that it's not good at dealing damage. But that's not the case for this build. Now let's see how we can do that. So this build I made has 1 level of White Draconic Sorcerer and 11 levels of Abjuration Wizard. The core spell it relies on is the level 1 Abjuration spell, Armor of Agathis. When it's cast at level 1, it gives you 5 temporary hit points, and any time an enemy hits you with a melee attack, it deals 5 cold damage to the enemy. You can upcast it to increase the temporary hit points and cold damage. For every level increased, they both increase by 5. This spell doesn't require concentration, and the effect lasts until you lose all of the temporary hit points. The highest spell slot this build can use is a level 6 slot, so that's 30 temporary hit points and cold damage. This is a really stable way to deal damage. No attack roll, no damage roll, no saving throw, no ability score requirement, just a fixed 30 cold damage. All you need to do is to let an enemy hit you with a melee attack. But of course, under normal circumstances, this spell will soon wear off, because you are getting hit and losing those temporary hit points. But that's not the case for this build, because we have the Abjuration Wizard to constantly and significantly reduce the damage you take. It's not rare to see this build get a critical hit but take zero damage. So usually, one spell slot is enough for our Armor of Agathys to last a whole day, and we can use our highest spell slot to maximize the damage it deals. Let me break down the abilities of an Abjuration Wizard here for those who don't know it yet. At level 2, you get the ability Arcane Ward. It reduces incoming damage by an amount that equals the ward's intensity. At the start of each day, you get an intensity that equals your wizard level. It can be charged to twice your wizard level. And every time you cast an abjuration spell, the ward's intensity charges by the amount of the spell's level. Any time you take damage, the ward prevents an amount that equals its intensity, and its intensity lowers by 1 after. In the late game, this build can constantly maintain a ward intensity of around 19, and that reduces a lot of damage. At level 6, you get the ability Projected Ward. With this, you can use your ward to protect one ally each turn as a reaction. Remember to untoggle your opportunity attack, in case you waste your reaction on that and cannot cast your protection reactions. But for this build, I don't recommend frequently using this ability, because you are getting hit a lot. You need to save the intensity for yourself. At level 10, you get the ability Improved Abjuration. Now, every time you short rest, your ward's intensity charges by an amount equal to your wizard level. At this point, you will be very, very, very hard to kill. This is how tanky an abjuration wizard is. Aside from the abilities of the abjuration wizard, this build also reduces damage by getting multiple resistance. For starters, if you have resistance to a type of damage, you only take half the damage from that type. Our first source of resistance is the Abjuration Country Blade Ward. It gives you resistance to slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning damage. These are all the weapon damage types in the game. This country lasts for 2 turns, and it takes an action to cast. Normally, it seems too costly, but for this build, you deal most of your damage by just walking, so you have the luxury to use it. Our second source is the spell Fire Shield. It gives you resistance to either fire or cold damage for 10 turns, you choose the type. And it deals 2d8 damage of the other type to enemies who hit you with a melee attack. So this spell increases our damage reducing and retaliating damage at the same time. We can get this spell at character level 8. Besides these two, there are many items in the game that can give you resistance to certain damage type. These are the things you should prioritize when sourcing equipment for this build. What's good about this retaliating fighting style is that you use your movement to deal damage to multiple enemies in a turn, and then you have your action and bonus action saved for other things. You are a very efficient damage dealer when fighting a bunch of melee enemies. Okay, now let's talk about the leveling strategy. 
We aim to level into each class and what you can do in different stages of the game. We start this build with the Sorcerer class to get Armor of Agathys at the right beginning. When originally allocating ability scores, we give the major bonus to Charisma and bring it all the way up to 17, which is the highest possible for now. We are eventually getting it to 20. This is to maximize our casting ability and performance in conversations. Then we give the minor bonus to Dexterity and bring it up to 16. This is where we get our AC. The AC of this build is a delicate matter. You need to switch between can dodge a ranged attack and can get hit by a melee attack. According to my experiment, 16 dexterity is a nice number for this. Remember not to equip anything that further boosts your AC. Then we forego 2 strength to bring constitution to 13. We'll make it 14 later in the game. This is to increase our hit points and thus our survivability on the front line though the enemies usually can't touch our real hit points. Constitution also increases our constitution saving throws, and since we are starting as a sorcerer, we have a proficiency bonus on constitution saving throws, which is plus 2 for now and will eventually become plus 4 at level 9. So our effective constitution is even higher than 14 when making saving throws. Finally, we leave intelligence and wisdom unchanged at 10. For the subclass of the Sorcerer, we choose Draconic Bloodline and choose White Dragon for its Draconic Ancestry. Through this ancestry, we get the spell Armor of Agathys at level 1. This is one of the two fastest ways to get this spell. The other one is the Warlock class. But the Warlock class uses their special spell slot, and you need to stick in the Warlock class to upcast this spell, so doesn't work for this build. Well, at this point, we won't be using this spell to do retaliation because we can't protect it yet. It will wear off too fast. We'll be able to do retaliation at level 3. Before that, we will be using ranged cantrips like a normal starting caster. Draconic Bloodline also gives you the trait Draconic Resilience. It sets your base AC to 13, which is the equivalent of the spell Mage Armor. Now you can save a spell slot for this. For the Sorcerer Cantrips, first we choose Blade Ward, of course, then we choose Poison Spray. This is a semi-melee cantrip that deals poison damage. It deals the highest damage among all cantrips. It will be our default attack. Then we choose Shocking Grasp. This is a melee attack that deals lightning damage. This is for the enemies that are immune to poison damage. It has an advantage on enemies with metal armor, and if you land the hit, the enemy can no longer use reaction anymore and you can walk away safely without getting an opportunity attack. But for this build, you need the enemies to use their reaction to attack you. So remember to walk among them first to trigger the opportunity attacks and then use this country to attack. Then we choose Ray of Frost. This is a ranged attack that deals cold damage and it lowers the enemy's movement. This is for the enemies that you cannot get close to in a turn. This will also be our default attack before we can do retaliation. For the sorcerer starting spells, first we choose Shield, a must-have for any wizard or sorcerer build. It's a reaction that gives you another 5 AC when you need it, making you harder to be hit. This spell is how we switch between can dodge a ranged attack and can get hit by a melee attack. Then we choose Enhanced Leap to give your party more freedom when exploring. It's a ritual spell, which means if you cast it outside of combat, it doesn't consume your spell slot. From level 2 to level 12, we'll be leveling up in the wizard class to get the most out of Abjuration Wizard. For the wizard cantrips, we are gonna choose 3 utility cantrips. There is no point in choosing anything offensive, because wizard uses intelligence to cast the spells, and we are not gonna land many offensive spells with 10 intelligence. First, we choose Light. This country can make an object shine and illuminate the surroundings. For this build, I recommend you cast it on your own weapon, because you always run to the front line to engage the enemies. This way, you can always illuminate the enemies and make it easier for your teammates to land their attacks. This effect lasts a whole day, so you only need to cast it when the day starts. Then, we choose Mage Hand to manipulate things from a distance. Then, we choose Friends to make better use of our nice charisma. This gives you advantage in conversations, making you more likely to influence people. For the wizard starting spells, first we choose Long Strider. 
which I think is a must-have for any party. It increases the target's moving distance for the whole day without concentration, as long as the spell is still prepared. And it's a ritual spell too. With this effect, we can walk a longer distance among the enemies and trigger more opportunity attacks. Then we choose Feather Fall. Combined with Enhanced Leap, it gives your party even more freedom when exploring the map. Then, Disguise Self, which allows you to assume a false identity. This can be useful in places where a certain race has benefits. Then, Find Familiar. This allows you to summon a creature into your party to help with combat and exploring. Once summoned, they'll be there until their hit points get reduced to zero. It's a ritual spell too, and summon spells don't need to stay prepared once the creature is summoned. Then, we choose Thunder Wave. It can be used to move some heavy objects outside of combat. Then, Chromatic Orb. It can be used to deal a certain type of damage to trigger some effects. At this point, we have learned 6 wizard spells, but we can only prepare 1. We give this slot to Long Strider. When we get an extra slot at the next level, we can use it to prepare and use those utility spells when we need one of them. At wizard level 1, you also get the ability Arcane Recovery. You can recover a combined level of spell slots that is less than or equal to half your wizard level, rounded up. At level 3, we choose into the Abjuration School and get the ability Arcane Ward. Now we have the protection for Armor of Agathys and can start doing retaliation. At level 4, we can learn and prepare the spell See Invisibility. This is one of the best abilities of a wizard. It lasts a whole day and doesn't need concentration, but you do need to keep it prepared. I also recommend learning Knock. This spell can unlock any lock, no matter its difficulty class, unless the story forbids it. At level 5, we get to choose our first feat. Here, we choose Ability Improvement to bring our Charisma to 18 and our Constitution to 14, giving them both another plus one modifier. We can also learn and prepare the spell Misty Step. It is useful both inside and outside of combat by teleporting for quite a distance. At level 6, we can learn a powerful spell that every mage should learn, Counter Spell. This allows you to completely negate an enemy spell as a reaction. Counter Spell can negate any spell whose level is not higher than the spell slot you spent. If the spell's level is higher, you still get a chance to negate it, but you need to make an ability check. As a level 3 abjuration spell, it charges our arcane ward by at least 3. We also get to learn the spell Remove Curse to better protect our allies. This is another level 3 abjuration spell, so it charges our arcane ward by at least 3. At level 7, we get our second special school ability, Projected Ward. Now we can use our arcane ward to protect our team. At level 8, we can learn the spell Fire Shield, giving us another resistance and further enhancing our retaliating capacity. We also get to learn the spell Conjure Minor Elemental to summon another unit for our party, which is recommended for any mage build. At level 9, we can choose our second feat. Here, we choose Ability Improvement to increase our Charisma to 20 the cap, maximizing our spell casting ability. At level 10, we can learn the spell Conjure Elemental to summon a stronger unit for our party. At level 11, we get a level 6 spell slot. Now, we can upcast Armor of Agathys at the highest level possible. At this level, we can also upcast Conjure Elemental to summon the strongest unit we can summon for our party. Both this and the upcast Armor of Agathys use a level 6 slot, but you only have one level 6 slot, and your recharge ability cannot recharge a level 6 slot. Normally, this slot is more useful to upcast the Armor of Agathys, but if you can find something in the game that allows you to recharge the level 6 slot, you can have them both. At level 12, there is nothing new to learn, we don't need any of the level 6 spells, neither can we afford to use them. But at this level, we get another wizard level, and it increases the cap of our arcane ward. Okay, we have talked about how good this build is, now let's talk about its weaknesses. The most obvious weakness is that your retaliation ability only works against the melee attackers. If there are too many archers or casters focusing on you, your arcane ward and armor of agathys may wear off before you can make use of them. So, I recommend you go for the archers and the casters first. Fortunately, you don't need to worry about the melee enemies in a way, because you want to go past them and trigger those opportunity attacks. 
Another thing is that the majority of your damage is cold damage. If you meet some enemies that are resistant or immune to it, you won't be able to damage them efficiently. But those enemies are rare in both Skate 3. And then there is your casting ability. We get counter spell from the wizard class, which uses intelligence to cast the spells, but we have a low intelligence. So it's not a good idea for you to use counter spell against the spells with a higher level than the slot you use. But fortunately, this is the only wizard spell we use that requires an ability check. And that is everything about this Retaliation Ice Mage build. Hope you like it. And if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.